In this video, we cover the security feature DHCP snooping. We will explain what DHCP snooping is and how it can be implemented to safeguard your network against DHCP attacks. As you might know, DHCP is a network protocol that automatically assigns IP addresses and other network configuration to connected devices. The hosts send a DHCP request, and the server dynamically offers an IP address in the DHCP response. This dynamic process can sometimes be disrupted by malicious attacks such as DHCP spoofing and DHCP starvation. DHCP spoofing attack happens when a malicious user connects a rogue DHCP server in the network to start offering IP addresses and network configuration to DHCP clients. This type of attack is done to redirect host traffic towards a malicious gateway for the purpose of intercepting traffic. It can also lead to other network issues such as IP address conflict, DNS poisoning and incorrect network configuration. Another type of attack is DHCP starvation. It happens when a malicious host floods the DHCP server with excessive DHCP requests that have fake MAC addresses. The purpose of this attack is to consume all the IP addresses in a DHCP pool or overwhelm the DHCP server with excessive requests. This makes legitimate clients unable to obtain an IP address and connect to the network. To protect the network from these attacks, GWN switches provide a security feature called DHCP snooping, which can be implemented on the switch to inspect DHCP messages and maintain a DHCP binding database that contains information about the devices and the assigned IP addresses. This table will be used as a reference to validate subsequent requests from DHCP clients. To mitigate DHCP spoofing attacks, DHCP snooping can specify the switch interface which is allowed to provide DHCP responses, and that is usually the interface connected to the router or a DHCP server. All other interfaces will be labeled untrusted and can only send DHCP requests. If the switch detects a DHCP response from an untrusted interface, it will not forward it. To safeguard against DHCP starvation attacks, DHCP snooping can limit the rate of requests so the router or DHCP server does not get overwhelmed by excessive DHCP requests. It can also be enabled to validate requests before they are forwarded to the router. Basically, the switch will verify if the client hardware address field in a DHCP request matches the source MAC address in the frame. If they match, the switch passes the request to the DHCP server. If not, the request will be dropped. Now, we will log into the web interface of a GWN switch to explain the configuration parameters related to DHCP snooping. Go to Security Submenu and click on DHCP snooping. By default, DHCP snooping is disabled on the switch. To enable it globally, toggle this option and define the VLANs because DHCP snooping is applied on a per VLAN basis. You can enable the feature on a single VLAN or a range of VLANs. Next, go to Port Settings. Under this configuration page, we need to ensure that all the interfaces that connect to clients have the trust mode disabled and only the interface that connects to the router or a DHCP server has trust mode enabled. Basically, DHCP snooping classifies interfaces into two categories, trusted and untrusted. The DHCP server responses can only be sent through the trusted port otherwise it will be dropped. Applying the trust mode to the right interface will safeguard the network against rogue DHCP servers and DHCP spoofing attacks. By default, all the interfaces have the trust mode disabled, so we need to select the interface that connects to the router and enable the trust mode. Client hardware verification is a security mechanism that can be enabled to mitigate the problem of DHCP starvation attacks. The attacker sends a large number of DHCP requests with fake MAC addresses with the goal of consuming all IP addresses in the DHCP pool. The physical MAC address cannot be changed, but a DHCP starvation attack will change the client hardware address in the client request. This is a screenshot of a DHCP request that shows the source physical MAC address matches the client hardware address inside the DHCP message. If there is a mismatch, the switch will consider it an invalid request and drop it. Unlike DHCP spoofing attack that fakes server responses, DHCP starvation attack forges client requests, 
So, we need to enable client hardware address verification on the interfaces that connect to clients. Select all the interfaces that connect to DHCP client and enable the client hardware address verification to protect the router or the server from excessive requests that can deplete the DHCP pool. Enable the rate limit option which defines the maximum number of DHCP messages allowed per second. Usually the rate limit is applied to untrusted interfaces. If you configure rate limit for an untrusted interface that connects to an access point, you might need to increase the rate limit based on the estimated number of connected wireless clients and the lease timeout. A situation where the rate limit can be reached or exceeded is when there is a power outage which might lead to a larger number of requests per second upon boot up. That is something to take into consideration. If the rate limit is exceeded on an interface, DHCP snooping will shut down the interface and the administrator needs to manually re-enable the port. Or you can enable port recovery for DHCP rate limit under switching port recovery. It is important to note that trunks that connect to other switches should not have rate limit enabled. It is always a good practice to enable rate limit at the interfaces that connect to clients. Also, it is not recommended to force rate limit on a trusted interface that connects to a router or a DHCP server since all DHCP traffic aggregates on that interface. Instead, use port security feature that allows you to securely bind the interface to the MAC address of the router. The statistics page lists the events related to DHCP snooping. You can use this page to look for any violations detected by DHCP snooping. The column for forwarding packets also displays the number of DHCP messages forwarded on each interface. That can help you determine if there is an excessive number of requests or responses on any specific interface. In a future video, we will cover option 82. This concludes today's video guide about DHCP snooping. Stay tuned for more video guides about the GWN 7800 series.